All right. So in order to do that, let's go back to the kangaroo tab. And under kangaroo sub tab, let's grab the particle object. All right. And this allows us to assign a starting mass and velocity to any of the points um, that are in our file. So let's go ahead and reset our simulation, make sure our timer is blocked before we make any changes. And then let's take our division points, connect them to the point. Now we can apply a mass, right? And by default, it's got a value of 1 in here, right? So we can use a panel, and let's try and um, define a couple of mass values. So I'm going to edit my panel, which I got from the params input tab. I'm going to uncheck multi-line data, and I'm going to put a couple of different values in here. So maybe 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. All right, I'm going to hit OK. And let's use these mass values to define the mass of each one of these points. Right? So if I connect this up, I now have some particles. Notice that if I see what's coming out of my particle object, it says kangaroo k point particle, which is different than what it said here for unary force. Uh, but in both cases, we created a particle. All right, once again, these are our mass values. Now, I've got 20 particles and only four mass values. So let's see what happens when we actually um, plug this into the kangaroo object. All right, so uh, one more time uh, to create particles. I'll do this once more. We're going to go to the kangaroo tab, kangaroo sub tab, grab the particle object, take the points out from division points, and plug that into the point. That's the starting location of our particle. And now we want to create some mass values. So to do that um, very easily, I'm just going to use a panel from params input. And I'm going to give it a couple different values. So 1, 3, 2, 4, let's say. Uncheck multiline data. So these are understood as a list. Label this mass values. All right, plug that into the mass, and now we're ready to plug this into the results of our particle object. I'm going to add it to the force object input by holding shift. See how I have a green icon next to my wire? That allows me to put multiple inputs into the same, multiple wires into the same input. Now I have two force objects going into this kangaroo physics engine object. All right, so I've got this reset. Let's go ahead and set it to false, allow our timers to be released. Okay, now let's take a look at what we have here in our viewport. Right? We said that the mass value should be 1, then 3, then 2, then 4, then 4, it's going to repeat 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. So I only have uh, four values, so all the rest after the fourth one are going to get the same mass value. All right, so why is it that a mass of 1 is moving farther than an object with a mass of 3? Well, if we think about mass, remember, um, something that is heavy um, is harder to move, right? So our unary force it's just a simple directional force, which means that the objects with higher masses move slower, right, in a kind of proportional relationship. All right. So now we actually have particles with specific mass values being defined and falling under a unary force. All right. So... Let's go ahead and um, take a few questions now. Um, and while we're doing that, um, I'm gonna, while you're entering your questions in, I'm going to show one more way to 
kind of develop the mass um, definition a little bit further, where we're going to give mass values to each one of the points. All right, so go ahead and type your questions into the questions window. And while we're doing that, I'm just going to use my same values for um, mass. I'm just going to repeat them until I get to the end of the list. So in doing so, I'm going to grab the list length of my division points. So that tells me I have 20. Then I'll just repeat this 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4 for as many points as I have. And that will be my set of mass values. Okay. All right. So, some good questions and so an illustrative example of uh, one of the points we made earlier. If I use this um, way of defining my mass values over and over again, uh, and I try and use run my simulation, I get a red a preview it says solution exception index was out of range. That doesn't really give us mu that much information, but if I turn this back to true, we'll notice that we have particles out is giving us a data tree instead of a list. So um, what we're going to do from now on is instead of just adding two inputs to the force objects, which once again, the reason we have both of these going in here is because we need to have this physical property assigned to the points and this physical property or force assigned to the points as well. So in order to get a result of both of those, we need to combine the kangaroo data types and bring them into the kangaroo physics engine in order for it to calculate as one solution. So from now on, instead of holding shift and connecting into here, which again, if we put our mouse over, it shows us the preview, uh, we can't use data trees going into this input. Right? So for force objects, we're going to collect them into a merge object under sets tree. And that's going to be here, merge. I'm going to connect my particles and my unary force. I'm going to right click and flatten the output so that I'm always going to have a list and not a data tree of force objects going into this. So now if I try again to run my simulation, it's much happier. And we can see here that my particles have been given mass values that are uh, repeating, so I'm getting a kind of pattern here as, um, as they start to fall. Okay, uh, one other question. Um, is related to the unary force and describing what that is once more. So before we talk about that, I just want to make sure that we label this here. This is going to be, this merge object is going to be all of our force objects. Okay. Now, uh, one question we had was, is the unary force the acceleration, which is multiplied by the mass to get the force? Um, that's very close. Uh, we, uh, we were talking about Newton's second law before, which is F equals MA, right? Force equals mass times acceleration, right? So the unary force is actually the force. And the particle here has been given a mass and no starting velocity. So what we're doing here is we're kind of shuffling around the uh, equation so that we get... Uh, the result that we want, right? King Roo is giving us the acceleration and we're giving it the force and the mass. So you can find the acceleration with those two variables by um, just dividing both sides by mass. So the physics engine here is doing all of this work and showing us the, what the acceleration is. 
That's a really great question. Um, so remember the unary force, that's just a force. Acceleration or how these objects are falling in space, um, that's really the kind of result of the simulation. So again, we said that simulation registers the inputs um, in time. So the inputs are the initial point locations, the masses that are assigned to each one of these points to make them a particle, and then the force that's being applied to each one of them, which is the unary force. Okay, so we've just successfully worked with um, our particles, and this is the end of the file. So if you have any other questions, go ahead and drop them in uh, to the question window, and we'll address them. Um, while we're doing that, if you have any questions, just go ahead and uh, drop them in, and then after that, I will um, go back over the installation process to make sure that everyone has their new utility objects from the user objects and their kangaroo physics engine uh, working appropriately. All right, so it looks like we're uh, ready to continue. So um, it, one last note about kind of workflow issues in working with kangaroo. Um, if we have our, um, if we are trying to save our file with our timer on, um, it's going to be a little bit um, kind of cumbersome. It's going to keep asking you if you want to overwrite the previous file. Because remember, if that timer is running, it's changing the solution. Even though we might not see any updates, it's changing the solution. All right, so I'm going to make sure that my timers are blocked. I'll reset my simulation by clicking this to true, save, and now um, I can go ahead and close or open another file. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and close this file. I'm going to close Grasshopper and uh, Rhino. Actually, I'll save this because this is the curve that we're using. This is our base file. All right, and let's go back over um, the installation process just once more, really quick. And um, one other reminder is that in order for any updates to take effect for your add-ons to Grasshopper, you have to completely close Rhino, right? Because once you initialize Grasshopper once, it doesn't look back into those folders uh, again to see if there's been any updates. So I'm going to launch Rhino. I'll open up the file that we just had. All right, first we're going to go to the Grasshopper folders command. Go to components, right? And um, for clarity, I'll get rid of all of these other objects I have here. So I just have the kangaroo physics object, right? And um, uh, one of the participants that we had today um, said that they had duplicate kangaroo objects in here. So if you had been using kangaroo before, you have to make sure that you get those those files out of this folder as well, in addition to copying them over. All right, so one more time, copy the downloaded files into this folder. I'll replace them. Right-click the DLL. Go to Properties, Unblock, hit OK. Same for the .gha. Properties, Unblock, OK. All right, and then if I go up one level to the Grasshopper folder, if I go to user objects, go ahead and open up the kangaroo, <coughs> kangaroo user objects folder and copy everything over once, right? So assuming I don't have these um, here, right? These are user objects I've made uh, for myself, so I'll leave them here. And then I'll copy 
all of these Grasshopper user object files into my top level user objects directory. All right, so now if I launch Grasshopper, everything should be set up with Kangaroo with my utility files present here. And if you don't have the option to um, to go to the properties, then um, you should be um, you should be okay. Your user setup may have already been uh, kind of corrected, so you don't have to deal with um, managing those permissions. Okay. So let's carry on um, and go on to the next um, exercise.